Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Vix Garage. In uh, today's episode, we are gonna look at this gas tank. If you remember from one of the previous episodes when I dropped this off the charger, um, we noticed that the POR15 failed and was delaminating from inside the tank. So that was why I was having the hard start issues. It was just floating around in there, clogging up the inline fuel filter and, uh, and such. So. I'm gonna show you how to hypothetically cut open a used gas tank safely. Um, as with anything though, uh, do this at your own risk. I've never done it before. So just from what I've read, we're gonna see if this works out. This may be the last episode of Vic's Garage. So uh, stand by and enjoy. Okay, so. <clears throat> This tank's been empty for a long time. It's been emptied since I've dropped it. Um, been airing out. It's been well over a couple months now. Um, but it still has a bit of that gasoline smell to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a good rinse. Use some uh, Dawn dish soap. We're gonna rinse it out and then dry it. So I'm just gonna do that right now. Spray some soap in here. Now, I don't think it's the metal so much holding onto it, but it might be the lamination that is kind of flaked off that's keeping that gas smell in there. But we'll give it a good rinse, see how it goes. since I dropped it essentially. So there's no actual gasoline in it. If anything, it's just vapors. So don't be that guy who just pours it down the storm drain. Uh, drain it properly, take it to your recycling center. But I'm just gonna rinse this out now, uh, get the last little bit of soap out and then we'll dry it. And you, you can see here, like this is the lamination. It's all just come off. You can see here as I'm washing it out, it's just coming out of the tank, whole bunch of it. Just gonna fill it and slosh it around one more time. Not smelling so much like gas anymore. Probably, like I said, because it got all that lamination out. It's just more of it. Okay. Okay. So now I am going to show you how I set this up. I've got this four inch dryer duct. I've taped it over the sending unit hole and sealed it. Uh, that other spot in the back was where my return line was. I just cover that up. But um, I'm gonna run it from my exhaust from my minivan here into the tank. And then obviously it will come out the filler neck hole. Now the exhaust will be used to help dry out the tank 
and get rid of any other fumes that may be remaining. Generally, I guess like a, from my understanding, what I read is like a radiator shop or um, something along those lines have a steam kit that'll clean it, but obviously I don't have that. And this is the next best thing. So I've just used some tuck tape, sealed that inlet as best as I can, and we're gonna run the exhaust for about 20, 30 minutes. And I'm gonna go have another beer and add to my COVID-15. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so after sitting in the chair, losing track of time for a bit and having a few pops, I am now done steaming the tank with my exhaust gas. And I am gonna check to see if there's any remaining vapors with this improvised torch on a stick so I can keep some distance and see if it flares out. Now, because it's not contained and it's got multiple holes in it, it's not gonna explode but there may be some vapors and it may cause a flare out. So I don't want to stand anywhere close to it when I test this. All right, here we go. I think we're good. Okay, so that's basically the procedure and how you would clean a gas tank if you were to do some welding or repairs to it. I'm now gonna cut this one open so we can see the POR15 failure. Uh, I'm just gonna use a step drill bit, punch a hole, and then a jigsaw to cut a square out. Open her up. Now look at that. You can see it's just completely delaminated. Now, yeah, like just virtually useless. I'm surprised it didn't leak. My uh, welds are at the time were <laughs> iffy at best, but they seem to have held up. It didn't leak. Um, but yeah, it's just the whole thing, every bit delaminated. And I know I follow the instructions. Now, So before I wrap this one up, let's uh, talk about what happened there. So I had to weld that sump on the tank because I had the big plans for what I wanted to do with the future of the car at the time. Um, with the welding, there was the tiny pinhole leak here and there. 
I had to put the return line in. So I, I used the PR15 to seal those kind of tiny little gaps. They were just a pain to get with the welder and stuff. Um, I did follow the instructions. Now, I know the tank is 15 years ago or so I did it, maybe 10. Uh, I don't have the date off the top of my head. But I bought the whole kit that came with the degreaser, with the metal prep, and the POR15 gas tank sealer. So I used all three, even though it was brand new, didn't need the, really the degreaser. I used the degreaser. I remember using the metal prep. And I did use the sealer, obviously, because we've seen it in the tank. Um, and it failed. It, it, you know, I, I've talked to a bunch of other people who've used POR products, and it's very hit or miss. Uh, people either seem to love it, or they have an experience like mine where it's just failed in utter complete fashion. I called, um, I called POR15 and talked to him about it, and uh, the rep was great on the phone. It was super nice and all, but he basically said that it should last a lifetime and that if it failed, it was probably somewhere in the prep process. Now, if I follow those three steps, I don't know where in the prep process it would have failed. Um, like if it's, like I know you have to dry it out in between the, the metal prep and the application. And I remember using a, a hair dryer to dry it out and force air through it. So like maybe there was a drop of water in it still, I don't know. Um, seems ridiculous if like that little bit of moisture would completely ruin it um, i don't think that was the case regardless because like i said i did use a hair dryer i recall um i know you have to wait like several days before you put fuel in it uh i'm sure i did that because it wasn't my primary driver um the only thing i otherwise i can think of is i did let fuel sit in it as the car sat for a long time and the fuel went bad but if it's supposed to hold up to like high level racing fuels and all sorts of other products uh fuel additives and stuff then having bad gas in the tank destroying the lining doesn't seem to make sense to me and if that's the case then again i don't know like how durable or, or quality of this product is um i don't know like i probably would avoid pr15 products in the future um, if you've had success with it, let me know in the comments below. Tell me, uh, tell me your experience is good or bad. And uh, I'd, I'd appreciate hearing them because I, this is my experience with it. It's the only time I've used a POR15 product. And it'll probably be the only time I will. I'll probably switch to Eastwood products or something like the rust encapsulator and stuff for the charger further on as I get into it. So again, let me know what you think, uh, your experiences. And as always, if you liked this video please like and subscribe also again that was the steps I used to um, cut open the gas tank in theory you should be able to weld on it too if you were prepping it to weld a sump on like you like I did earlier but um, as always with those things like you're you're welding onto a gas tank that had fuel in it you should take extra precautions it might be worthwhile to pay a radiator shop to steam it for you and and such but it worked out for me. You saw I put the torch right into the tank and uh, no incidents. So as always, see you at the next one, guys. Take it easy.